What's up everybody? I'm John. I'm the lead game designer at Caged Element. My favorite thing about this game is the movement. And this is a complete guide on how to go fast in Speed Freaks. We're going to start off by going over the basics. And then later on in this video, we'll get into some of the more fun advanced stuff. The first thing we're going to cover in this video is dash versus boost. You have your dash ability if you're a light vehicle and you have your boost bar. All the vehicles have this. What's the difference? Well, the simplest way to think about this is dash is acceleration, boost is top speed. So if you're in a situation where you need to accelerate, it's usually better to use your dash. And if you're going flat out down the track and trying to hit a top speed, you wanna be burning your boost. Dash lets you build a lot of speed quickly, but the only way you can maintain that speed is by spending boost. Without boost, you'll quickly fall back to your base vehicle speed but spending boost allows you to hold on to that speed and even stack different sources of speed together. Just like boosting, traveling through the air will also prevent you from losing speed. This means that you can save your boost by using a ramp instead. It also means that big jumps are the perfect time to recharge your boost bar. You basically always want to be either boosting or airborne if you're trying to go fast. Let's talk about the handbrake next. Holding the handbrake button will pull your vehicle into a tight spin, it basically allows you to pivot. This is extremely important for some vehicles with limited firing angles. In general, the handbrake makes you lose a lot of speed, but luckily we just covered an extremely powerful acceleration tool that most of the vehicles have access to. Combining the handbrake and the dash together really opens up this game. We're going to talk about that a little more later on. If you keep holding down the handbrake button, you'll just do a donut. And even the heavy vehicles have access to this ability. So this is very useful for the Grot Mega Tank players who always seem to have a war trike behind them. You just hold down the handbrake button and it'll increase your turn speed so you can get the plow where you need it to be. While you're airborne, you still have access to a few options to control your movement. The first of which is the air brake. So if you just press the brake button, you'll lose some speed and you'll be pulled towards the ground more quickly. This is really useful for those precision landings when you're trying to land on a roof or something. If you hold the handbrake button while you're airborne, you now have access to air control. So the movement inputs will rotate the vehicle. Very important skill to master because landing on your wheels, uh, pointing in the direction you want to, is often the difference between life and death in this game. Now, before you press the handbrake button when you're airborne, your vehicle is under the influence of automated air control. So this system will sort of naturally try to pull your vehicle into a stable trajectory. Once you activate air control, so press the handbrake button while airborne, this system is completely disabled until you touch the ground again. A trick I like to do to exploit the automated air control is if I'm facing the wrong way and I'm about to pop off of a ledge, you can do a dash 180, again, we'll talk about this later, and the air, the automated air control will basically catch your vehicle and prevent it from spinning further than you want it to, which is super satisfying. You know what, I'm getting impatient. Let's just talk about the dash techniques. So I just mentioned a dash 180. We're gonna talk about the other advanced techniques you can pull off using the dash. Quick refresher on how this ability works. When you dash, your vehicle's momentum is redirected in the direction your camera is pointing. The challenging part is learning how to rotate your vehicle so it's also pointing in that direction, which lets you keep up the flow. The first technique, the most basic, is just like a dash turn. So if you're turning, if you point your camera in the direction you're turning and press the dash ability, your vehicle will perform this super tight, super fast turn, great for escaping around corners. If you need to fully turn the vehicle around, the fastest way to do that is by adding the handbrake. If you just give the handbrake a quick tap to break your tire's grip with the ground right before you input the dash, you'll be able to spin your vehicle to point it in any direction. This is like the bread and butter of Speed Freak's movement. It really opens up your ability to reposition around your enemies, and you should be doing this very frequently. If you find yourself spinning out, you're probably holding the handbrake for too long. You can also just steer in the opposite direction to try to catch the vehicle before it spins out. 
If you want to flip the direction your vehicle is facing, but without changing your momentum, you can do a dash 180. The technique is the same, just tap your handbrake and steer before you input the dash, but instead of looking behind you, point the camera in the direction you're already traveling. I find this is most useful when I'm stopped or traveling backwards and I want to be driving forwards, but it's also really fun to do the opposite and flick your vehicle to point the mounted weapons at someone who's behind you. This next technique is probably the most satisfying thing in Speed Freaks, at least for me, the dash landing. This is a tricky one. Basically, when you're landing, if you want to hold on to all the speed you have while traveling through the air, you know, built up due to gravity, you can hold the dash input as you hit the ground. If the vehicle is misaligned with the terrain or the object that you're landing on, there's a lot of different types of landings that can occur. The one that you want is this one because it keeps as much of your speed as possible. I've found that the most consistent way to get this landing is to have the nose pointed very slightly into the ground. So basically your dash is like pointing into the ground. Something I should mention, all abilities in Speed Freaks, including the dash, if you hold down the input, you'll activate the ability as soon as it's available. It is possible to combine a dash landing and a dash redirect. You'll have to experiment to find the right inputs depending on the direction that you want to go. The last thing that I want to mention is the wall dash. So we're really going off the deep end here, but there are some applications for this. The conditions for performing a dash, the bottom of your vehicle just needs to generally be touching something. So let's say you've mastered all of these techniques and you still want to go faster. Well, I have one last piece of advice for you, and that's to head into the settings menu and just crank up the field of view scale. I guarantee if you max out the setting, you will feel so much faster in game. And that is where I think we'll end it. We covered the basics. We touched on most of the advanced techniques that I'm aware of. If you guys do find any cool movement techniques, movement tricks, or you just pull something off in game, definitely post it in the Discord. Personally, I'm so excited for you guys to get your hands on this game, to get comfortable with it, to start to explore, because after sinking a lot of time into just driving around, I know there's a ton of room for skill expression, for improvisation, and just pulling off cool plays. So definitely turn on that recording software when you boot up Speed Freaks, and I will see you guys in game.